Is it? If you were going to pick an end of season trip in the, in the middle of June with the sun out, you'd have picked Malta, yeah. Out of all the qualifying uh, countries that we got in our group, you'd definitely pick Malta for this time of year, yeah. Second time we've been, it came last time we came, we played them as well. Yeah. Oh. I don't know how many times I've seen games at this stage of the season where I've gone, well, they've got no chance in the next World Cup or they've got no chance in the next Euros, um, including last time I came to Malta. And then they've gone on to be a semi finalist or finalist or whatever. Yeah, this, this concern that, you, you know, we play so many games in England and this is on top of, you know, Man City winning the championship. Champions League and some of their players playing but I suppose the, if you'd wanted a game without being too disrespectful for Malta at the end of the season when the players are gassed out you'd pick Malta. I'd be very interested to see whether um, Gareth Southgate decides to um, use uh, John Stones in the same way as he's done for Man City and play him in front of the defence instead of uh, instead of in the back four. I think if he, if he played that position well I think he's got a chance of staking a claim there. I think anybody, wide players are always the players that are peripheral so you know you've your Foden's, your Grealish's, I think have got a, and obviously Jude Bellingham's just got a massive move, hasn't he? So he's going to have to justify that massive move to Real Madrid, he's on. Well, I, I definitely think it'll help. I think a lot of people over the years have, have done a bit of, I told you so with that, and thought he was better playing a bit further forward. England have had a lot of right-backs competing with Trent Alexander-Arnold over the last few years, and he's got his favourite players, obviously, in that position. Um, so I think it gives him a better chance than it did if he was just stuck as a right-back, yeah. I think... No, I don't think so. I think with it being a qualifier, it's going to be a lot more structured. I think the Nations League, there's so much change throughout the team as well, and for each game, you've not got the consistency, whereas I don't see them having that as much during this period. So I think it'll be, well, it'll be a different story. And I think your opposition is different. No, offense, no, no disrespect to them, but it is different opposition to Germany, Italy and Hungary. Do you think you have there? I think Madison had a chance against Ukraine. Um, I think if he gets played again, he, he needs to. There needs to be consistency from him in quality. Um, there's a lot of players that are always get a lot of stick. Uh, Calvin Phillips, Maguire. So it's if they get played, they've got to turn up. Uh, goals, hopefully, but uh, just a nice atmosphere, really. Like obviously, Malta's full of Brits anyway. And since I've come here yesterday, like it's been nothing but friendly and. Yeah, it's been great so far. So yeah. After like a long season, obviously some of the boys, I don't know how some of the city lads are gonna cope with this weekend and this, you know, this international window. But uh, I mean, any time you put on that shirt, you should be sort of up for it. And it's only two more games, you know. Come on, think of the break after that. So <laughs> he should do. I mean, I'm hoping to see a bit more of Eze. Like Eze should be a good addition. Hopefully, bring some sort of youthful spark to it. He seems quite at home with the whole uh, sort of atmosphere of the place. Like I saw a video of him yesterday, sort of getting to know all the staff yesterday. So hopefully a couple, of, a little bit of fresh blood and, you know, some of the experienced heads around him as well. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But looking forward to it anyway. How many, I mean, there's, there, there are some up and coming centre backs, obviously Mark Gwaii and stuff. But yeah, we need John Stones at the back. But I'd love to see Trent in midfield. You know, he's got to find a way to shoehorn Trent in the midfield. Well, in somewhere anyway, to get the most of him. Quite happy having a beer in the sun to come and watch England. Yeah, no, it's a good place to come. Yeah, And hopefully an easy three points. Yeah. Oh, I, I think they've come off the World Cup, in, um, gone into the season. They've had that little sort of uplift from the World Cup and come into the season. Finished well, a lot of them. Um, and I think we'll come in strong. And no offence to Malta, but they're not the strongest of opposition. We should, should come through quite easily. With the I think he'll stick with the tried and tested, but I think that's just Southgate's not the most experimental. He'll probably pull Harry Kane off quite early, um, just because he's got nothing more to prove, I think. I think it'll be interesting to see how Jack, Wilsh, uh, Jack Grealish is dealing with the hangover, but uh, yeah, other than that, I think it'll be pretty much a standard affair. Well, I saw a fact John Stone as was the he completed the most amount of dribbles in a Champions League final since Lionel Messi in 2015, which is a, I mean, stats will prove anything, but I mean, if there's a position there, but England are blessed with midfielders. I don't think there's any real need for him to stray into midfield. We, as a centre-back, he's probably our best position, I think. I, I, I love a player with flash and a bit of um, flair to come into the team. And Eze's got that, he, he's got it in abundance, he's got confidence, I think he'll go out and try to make, make himself known, and he's got, again, no offence to Malta, but a fairly easy opposition for him to show off a little bit. So hopefully we'll see some bit of flair from him, a bit of showboating maybe even.